with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. And we begin tonight with these major developments involving Russia and Vladimir Putin's moves involving Ukraine. 24 hours after Putin said he was recognizing two Russian-backed regions of Ukraine as independent, tonight President Biden before the American people calling it the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. The president saying Putin is planning to essentially carve out a big chunk of Ukraine. President Biden now announcing severe sanctions on Russian banks and wealthy Russians, warning it's just the beginning if Putin takes another step that there could be more. America's allies tonight united, acting quickly, the EU imposing sanctions of its own. And late today, we learned Secretary of State Antony Blinken has now canceled that meeting planned with the Russian foreign minister that had been set for this Thursday. That wasn't a surprise, but one more sign tonight reflecting the seriousness of this moment. President Biden speaking to the nation late today, calling Russia's actions a flagrant violation of international law, saying, who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries? A unanimous vote for sanctions from all 27 countries of the European Union. Germany delivering one of the sharpest blows, halting certification of that gas pipeline, Nord Stream 2, from Russia to Germany. President Biden saying this unity is something Putin hasn't been counting on. Tonight, Cecilia Vegas standing by at the White House, Martha Raddatz in Ukraine. But we're going to begin here with our senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel in Kyiv again tonight. Tonight, President Biden condemning Vladimir Putin after the Russian leader recognized two Russian-backed separatist states in eastern Ukraine and ordered his forces to move in. He bizarrely asserted that these regions are no longer part of Ukraine and their sovereign territory. To put it simply, Russia just announced that it is carving out a big chunk of Ukraine. Biden slamming Putin for declaring them independent states. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors? Biden then imposing significant new sanctions against Russian banks, business elites and their families. We've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. It can no longer raise money from the West. The European Union's 27 nations also unanimously imposing sanctions, with Germany freezing the major new Russian natural gas pipeline known as Nord Stream 2. Biden announcing he's also deploying 800 US troops already in Europe, as well as fighter jets and helicopters to NATO members in the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. The president insisting these are defensive moves and the troops will not be fighting Russian soldiers. Not far from Ukraine's border with Poland, Matt Gutman is with US paratroopers. This is part of the contingent from the 82nd Airborne. They've been here for a number of days already. The part of joint exercises with the Polish military, and we are just a handful of miles away from the Ukrainian border in that direction. Their mission described as deter and assure. Deter Russia, assure the Allies. But Putin remains defiant, hinting at his possible next move, supporting the claims of Russian-backed separatists to the entire Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. The rebels currently hold around 30% of the Donbass. The rest is held by Ukrainian forces. Any attempt by the rebels with Russian military backing to take the rest of this land will almost certainly lead to a major conflict. Russia evacuating its diplomats from Ukraine. Smoke rising from the embassy in Kiev after staff were seen carrying in what appear to be boxes of documents. Despite Kremlin denials that Russian troops have already deployed into the east of Ukraine, images have emerged of what seem to be Russian tanks and armoured personnel carriers there. Putin issuing three demands. That Ukraine abandon its goal of joining NATO, to demilitarise and to negotiate with the separatists. None of this is likely to be acceptable to the Ukrainian government. President Zelensky issuing a strong and defiant message, saying we want peace, but we have a right to self-defense. In a rousing address to the nation, he said, we are on our land and we owe nothing to anyone. It's a view shared by the mayor of Kiev, Vitaly Klitschko, a former world heavyweight boxing champion. He may have hung up his gloves a long time ago, but he knows that the time may soon be here where he has to fight once more. As former soldier, right. I, gee, I promise if my country need me, I'm ready to fight for my hometown, for my home country. 
All right, so let's bring in Ian Panel live again tonight from the Ukrainian capital. And Ian, you know the U.S. Secretary of State Blinken just before we came on the air saying he's now canceled uh, his meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov in Europe. Uh, it had been scheduled for later this week. And Ian, do we know anything tonight about what might be happening in eastern Ukraine now that Putin has given the green light for Russian troops to move in? Yeah, it's a good question because attention is focused elsewhere, but there has been a massive increase in shelling in that area. The body that monitors the number of ceasefire violations registered around 300 incidents a day throughout last year. Today, that number was 2,000. Uh, and I think most worrying is that the rebels continue to accuse the Ukrainian military of launching offensive operations, not offering any evidence. But this suggests that despite all these developments of recognition of independence, everything that Putin has said, that they're still building a pretext for a potentially much larger military invasion.